Welcome to this week's Torah portion study, Akudai in the Sufsidus. If you follow my decrees, Kukot, and are careful to obey my commands, Mitzvot, Mitzvot I will send you rain in its seasons, and the ground will yield its crops, and the trees their fruit. Leviticus 26, 3, 4. Last week in the parish of Ahar, God instructed Israel to give the land a Sabbath rest in the seventh year. This sab sabbatical year is called Shemento release. As well, God commanded that every 50th year also be the Shabbat year of the Yobel commonly called the year of jubilee. Bahar ends with God's directive to observe his Shabbat and references his sanctuary. This week's Parashat Akutai, which is the last reading from the book of Leviticus, details the blessing of obedience and the curse of disobedience. God promises the people that they will be blessed enjoying prosperity and security in the land if they keep his sustenance, kukut, and commandments mitzvah. He also warns that if they reject the Torah and abandon his covenant, they will be cursed. This obvious extraction is called the Tahaka rebuke or re reproof, and the one of two Torah portions in which such a warning is given. The other is Ki Tabo. Parashat Bakudai begins with ten verses that describe the general blessing that rewards obedience to God's commandments. The first of God's promises is seasonable rain in the land which will produce such an abundance of fruit that the time for threshing will extend until the time of for sowing seed. I will send the rain in its season, and the ground will yield its crops, and the trees their fruit. Leviticus 26.4 The book of Ecclesiastes remains, reminds us that there is a time and season for everything. Ecclesiastics 3.1 One needs to look no further than a season of drought in their land to understand how it brings destruction rather than blessings. God's blessings are always delivered on time. God also promises that if the Jewish people keep his commandments, Torah, then they will live in the peace in their land. They will chase their enemies who will fall before them. I grant you peace in the land, and you will lie down, and no one will make you afraid. You will pursue your enemies, and they will fall by the sword before you. Leviticus 26, 6, 7. This comforting section of blessing concludes with God's promises of a receptacle relationship with his people. If, if they walk in his ways, he will accept them as 
his people and put his tabernacle among them, walking in their midst. I will walk among you and be your God, and you be my people. Leviticus 26.12 The blessing that results from the obedience are framed by the mit, 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 metaphor of walking halak in his pakut, divine degree, decrees of substance that define reason such as the law of the red heifer and keeping Shemar his mitzvah commandment. The last 13 blessings ends with a curious reminder that God set the Israelites free from the bondage of slavery in Egypt. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt so that you would no longer be slaves to the Egyptians. I broke the bars of your yoke and enabled you to walk with heads head held high. Leviticus 26:13. We understand from this verse that it is God who enabled the Israelites to walk uprightly by revealing himself to them and setting them free from slavery. It is only within the, in the conventional relationship that they could walk in his ways. These verbs walking and keeping in the Torah portion imply that blessing comes from deliberate actions on the our parts. Nevertheless, keeping his commandments is only possible because he has set us free. It is, a one, it is wonderful to claim the blessing of God. However, these promises are conditionally upon our obedience it is fertile to walk in disobedience and still claim the blessing and results from our relationship with God disobedience is a symptom of a broken relationship Disobedience, curse, and exile. A 28 verse section detailing about 30 specific curses that result from disobedience follows the blessing section of the parasha. It is a list ever worsening conquesting that will come upon God's people if they disobey his commandments. These passages are recited in the synagogue with fear and trembling. I will bring on you sudden terror, wasting diseases and fever that will destroy your sight and sap your strength. You will plant seed in vain because your enemies will eat it. I will set my face against you so that you will be defeated by your enemies. Those who hate you will rule over you and you will flee even when no one is pursuing you. Leviticus 28, 16 and 17. This Torah portion underlines the importance of giving the Holy Land its cemental year 
abreast by emphasizing that it would finally be able to rest when God ex 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 exiles his people because their disobedience. Then the land will enjoy its Sabbath years as the time that lies desolate and you are too. You are in the country of your enemies. Then the land will rest and enjoy Sabbath, Leviticus 26, 34. Indeed, God brought upon his people the worst punishment ever, exile from their own, their own land. Although a remnant reminded it remained in the land, the Jewish people were scattered to the four corners of the earth where they have been persecuted in the nations. I will scatter you among the nations and will draw out my sword and pursue you. Your land will be laid waste and your cities will lie in ruins, Leviticus 26 and 23. While the Jewish people remained in exile, the land itself received the rest that rest that people denied it when they inhabited it. Despite the despite the ex, extra extra recading description of severe punishment and terrible climate climates that would come on Israel for her disobedience God ends with a word of comfort and consolation yet in spite of this when they are in the land of their enemies I will not reject them, nor will I abhor them as to destroy them, breaking my covenant with them, for I am the Lord their God. But I remember but I will remember for them the covenant with the ancestors whom I ancestors whom I brought out of the land of Egypt in the sight of the nations that I might be their God. I am their Lord. Leviticus 12, I mean Leviticus 26, 44, and 45. God loved his people is not based on the God love, God's love for his people is not based on fickleness of human emotion. It is based on the bedrock of co covenant. Mm -hmm. Although the covenant blessing promises to the Israelites when they left Egypt came with specific, specific if then conditions the um Abrahamic, the 
Abrahamic covenant upon which they were ba based was given without condition for, ev for evidence and reliability of the Bible and the faithfulness of God we need to look no further than the establishment of the modern day state, state of Israel the restoration of the land to amazing fruitfulness and the dwelling of his people home to the promised land from the four corners of, of the globe. Mm. Trusting in God, cursed is the one who trusts in man, who, who draws strength from mere flesh, mere flesh, and whose heart turns away from the Lord, Jeremiah 17, 5. The prophetic portion of the Prakudai follows the theme of the blessing associated with walking with God in conventional relationship and the curse associated with walking away from him. In this portion, the prophet Jeremiah rebukes the people of Israel for adultery and and faithfulness telling them that they will go into exile but the half Torah section ends with a note of aspiration when Jeremiah shows his trust in the hope of Israel by praying help help me O Lord for I shall be He'll save me and I shall be saved for you are my praise. Jeremiah seventeen fourteen. Elsewhere in Jeremiah God promises through his prophet a new covenant, Brett Kedeshaw, in which the law of God would be written on the heart. The days are coming, declares the Lord. When I will make a new covenant, Brett Kedeshaw, Brett Kedeshaw, with the people of Israel and with the people of Judah, it will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt because they broke my covenant, though. I was a husband to them, Jeremiah 31, 31, and 32. The new covenant was sealed in the blood of Yeshua, the Messiah, when he died on the Roman execution stake. On the Passover, less than a day before his death, Yeshua held up the cup of redemption and said this is this cup is the covenant in my blood which I poured out for you Luke 22 20 understand the strength of the covenant our sin our sins are forgiven and remembered no more Isaiah 42 and 20 I mean 43 and 25 but does this new found freedom in Messiah give us a license to sin, forsaking the standards set forth in God's law. The Jewish rabbi Shuel, Apostle Paul, answers this question with res responding, Kaspakala, God forbid. We shall, we shall, we say then shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase by no means we die to sin how can we live in it any longer Romans 6 1 2 
while Yeshua has paid the price for our sins in resolving curse curse of the law and we can abide in God's love through faith the new covenant is no way nudifies our call to walk in holiness God has set us free from slavery to sin and we need no longer serve the evil master suffering the curse of the law neither do we need to serve God in fear of punishment rather rather we are to now free we are free now to enjoy the relationship promised in this Torah portion he walks among us and we are his people who, who serve him out of love devotion and gratitude for all he has done for us the Apostle Paul wrote in the book of Romans that there is nothing absolutely nothing which can separate us from the love of God that is in Messiah Yeshua now that is truly the good news for I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor things present nor things to come nor powers nor higher nor death nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God which is in the in Messiah Yeshua Adonai Adonai our God as his power you have the power to make a difference through your in incestory prayers and your free will offerings. Shabbat Shalom.